Hey guys, life again. I'm re-recording this tutorial because I realized that I made some mistakes in my vector math. Don't do vector math at 2 in the morning. Okay, so if you're new to this, if you haven't seen the last video, what I'm doing here is using a sphere mask, which is positioned and scaled based on the distance of a line trace hit result from the player character from the player to a point a bit beyond the attenuation radius of this player's spotlight okay let's take a look at the blueprints and the material, of course. Okay. So, here's the material. The magic happens right here with the sphere mask. It's set to 80. The hardness is set to 80. It can be whatever. But we want a little, little bit of a soft edge. Okay. For its A value, well, for the B value, we use absolute world position, excluding material offsets. Then for the A value, I'm using a vector parameter from a param from a material parameter collection. It's masked to RGB because we don't care about the A value. We only need its RGB value. And for the radius. We're getting the radius from the same look, from the same collection, which is which will be calculated using some fancy math in the blueprint. And the sphere mask is fed into the alpha of whatever you like. In my case, it's just a simple lerp between the white color and the red color, so that I can see that it's working. Moving on to the blueprint. Okay, here we go. In the character blueprint, where should we start? Well, okay. The thing that makes everything tick is the line trace by channel. It's right here. For the start, we just get the actual location of our character. Why is that? That's because our spotlight is at the same point as our player character. If your spotlight's not at the same spot as the origin of your character, you may want to, you know, Offset its uh, location by whatever distance away you've moved it. Get back to the event graph. We get the actual location for our initial starting location for the line trace. Then for the end result, we take that initial actor location, we add that. to a rotated vector. Okay. We use a rotated vector node. We take the attenuation radius of the spotlight. I added 50 to it because I want to give it a little bit of a buffer so it's not quite at the end. And I plug that into the X. That's the forward vector by default. And then I use a rotate vector node to rotate that vector by the control rotation. And then we add that rotated vector in with the vector with the actor location, and that gives us the endpoint for our line trace. Okay, moving on. We break the hit result of the line trace. 
we're really interested in, in the impact point, or the location, in my case I chose the impact point, is the location of the actual contact point of the trace shape with the surface of the hit object. Again, here you see we set a vector parameter value in our material collection. This is that vector parameter that I showed you in the material earlier. We just convert that look impact point straight into a color value. And that's how the material gets to use it. Now to determine how what the radius of our sphere mask should be, we go back over here, we use the attenuation radius, and we also get the outer cone angle. We use the attenuation the radius the attenuation radius of the light as a clamp as a maximum value that the radius could possibly be. So we take the impact point and subtract the actor the original actor location from that. And then we find a length of that vector. This gives us how far, how long of a distance between where we started and where we end, and where the line trace ends. Of course. And then we multiply that by the outer cone angle, which we've converted from degrees into radians. Because if you want to know the radius of an arc on a circle or any curved surface, just take the angle, just take the radians and multiply it by the radius, and voila. There you go. And so then we plug that into the scalar parameters, set scalar parameter value, and we set the radius of the sphere mask. Oh yeah, one last thing. We used a material location parameter. I mean a material parameter collection. One scalar parameter called radius and one color value, one vector parameter, which I called hotspot. But you can call it whatever you like. So I hope you found this informative and I'll see you next.